and welcome back to my channel and apparently I hired a brand new videographer that I had no idea I had but you know and apparently I have a set production designer and you know well sort of, uh, well, sort of. it's you know well, for, for all the chimichangas for all the chimichangas yeah okay like for all the headaches and annoyances yes that is my job <laughs> this is gonna be so weird because I don't film in front of you I know neither do I that actually made that comment made no sense <laughs> Look, I could have gone so sideways real fast. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, hi, everyone, and welcome back to May... F I don't know why I pause every month and forget what month it is, but you're, you know, I yeah. don't do this in front of you. No. That That sounds wrong itself. Yeah. But May favourites. Okay. Um, semester. Busy. I think I lived at my... I should change my post address to the desk in this room in this house because that's sort of where I lived <laughs> this month. So last semester of, like last week of semester and um, exams over the next like four weeks, but it's swap back this week, which is awesome. It's Sunday and I'm recording this a lot later than I normally do because like apparently I had to wait for this thing to be done and put up. But yeah, because winter is coming. So anyway. So, gaming, only one favourite for the gaming this month. Um, that is Surface 7 Alone in the Mist. Obviously another point and click. I don't know what else to really say about it apart, apart from it's a lot darker and a whole lot more macabre than... That's how you pronounce that word, right? Macabre, yes. Yeah, than other sort of point and clips, clicks we have played before. But, you know, whatever. So... That I haven't played any of the other Surface games before, but I had that one sitting on my hard drive for like a year, so I thought I'd play it. Number one, <laughs> Captain America Civil War. Not my favourite ever Captain America movie, but it was nice nonetheless. I especially like the part where he's bicep curling the helicopter, yeah. and they have like music in the background playing, but like... Would, it, would we say it was predictable? Some parts, yes. But it didn't feel like a Captain America movie. It might as well have been an Avengers movie. No. I don't I didn't like that fact, like... <sighs> Only because going off Why? the actual comic series, you look at the story arc of Civil War, and then you look at the movie and they've gone, okay, well, we're going to get the premise of it all, but we're going to change it just a little bit. But anyway, that is there. Number two. Angry Birds, we have to see this movie. I won't put a picture of Michael because Michael probably won't like that. But if you have a look at the ang like red, it if Michael was transformed into a picture of an angry bird, yeah. that would be you. And on bad days you'd be a bit more explosive, like bomb. Yeah. But it was really cute, it was really funny. It was a more grown up version of Zootopia. Damn straight. So uh, we recommend you see that. Uh third one, X Men Apocalypse. I think this is only my second X-Men movie I've seen. The only other one I saw was um, First Class, where yes. they're in Cuba. Yeah. And they relate to it in this movie. Yeah. But it's like, oh, my name's Jean Grey. It's like, no, it's not. Your son's a Stark. Yeah. Like, what is wrong with what is you? Going on? Wrong franchise. But yeah, it was really good. and But it didn't feel like the full one. Like, you already knew what was going to happen. But maybe it's because we just watched too many movies. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Music this month, four things. Went on a SoundCloud binge because I was sitting there on the internet doing some KML questions, but we'll get that to we'll get to that later. So artist number one is Violet Days. I'll put her SoundCloud link down below. She's a dark alternative pop kind of girl, but it is really good. I have like three or four of her things, so that's why I've just put her name, so go have a look. Uh, number two, Speaker of the House, obviously Deep House, if you couldn't get that from the title of the band. The house music. House music? House music. House music. So they only play You're a little houses. old. You probably wouldn't know what that means. Mm, house music. <laughs> it, it's just like... It's a genre of club music, which you probably wouldn't know because you haven't been to a club since the 90s. Yeah. So do they play house music at golf clubs? Because that would be technically club music then, wouldn't it? Or that... Actually, that'd be clubhouse music. <laughs> clubhouse. Number three, On and On by Goldhouse. And number four was I Got You by... I don't know how to pronounce this band, but I'll put the link down in the thing, but it's like Kyra X Esh Palante. 
by featuring like Brandon Letty. I've got it written here, so I'd remember. Oh, so Kifra. This here, Eki. that there, yeah, Eki. yeah. Eki Palente. Plan. I think it's Palente. I don't Palente? know. Eki Palente. I'm. So, I really am sorry. <laughs> okay, so books. There are a few of these this month. Number one, The Bone Collector. I got this for my birthday a month ago. But I, it took me for it. Like, I've been reading this since Easter. Like, I got it as an early birthday present to read over the Easter break. And if I finally finished it. Partly because it was just so informative. And it, took, it takes you forever. And you need to take a break to absorb what's going on. And secondly, because it was just so damn long and descriptive. And it's so completely different to the movie. And I understand why in terms of, like, the early 2000s, 1990s. Why, I'm assuming that's when the movie was made. Yep. They didn't really go through with what the book and sort of Lincoln Rhymes story is because that was something that was very frowned upon back then and people didn't want to talk about. So I understand that. But I would say that the book is... I would say the book is like ten times better. So. Yeah, the physics are brilliant. I'm sorry, it fell out of my hand. Sorry. Okay, um, number two. Wait. Number Wait. two. Number two. Not number twos. Number twos. Two comes after one, but one comes after three. And four out of five people. Number two is this ebook here. But I will also put a picture and the link will also be in the description. <laughs> Let me scroll so I can read what I need to say. Okay. So, okay. So this is a young adult fantasy ebook. It is approximately 306 pages. Obviously on an iPhone it will be a lot more because it's compacting it on a small screen. and It spreads out over a whole lot more pages, right? So I love this book a lot more than I expected it to. I love fairies. Fairies are my thing. Like when, if you ask me when I was four or five what I wanted to be, it wasn't princess. It wasn't ballerina. It was fucking fairy. Okay, I had a fairy dollhouse. I don't have it now, but I have. It, I had it then. <laughs> so it was fairly good. <sighs> and I'm with the pun. No. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really got into it. I was really happy with it. At the start, I thought it was more of a, like, Romeo and Juliet retelling. And then he had some, like, elements of the Little Mermaid in there because she has to, like, get a human body. But from under the sea? Not from under the sea, no. She's a tree nymph. Ah, so she doesn't have a pet crab. No, she doesn't have a pet Actually, crab. Actually, a lobster. It's in the middle of Tennessee. It's rural Tennessee. But, so basically, if there's no sea in Tennessee, that would just make it ten. I'm just digging myself a bigger hole, so I'm, I'm, all I'm going to say is that Oriana is a really well-written, strong character. She, not to be, like, plug my feminist side, but, you know, it was really well done. Um, they transition between two main characters, and this is going to be a series. So at the end of the book, there was, a, like, a first chapter of the prequel, and it tells you more about the character Abraham in the book, and, like, obviously in Horizon, so I was really excited and I have it sitting there. I've like liked the author's like fan page and everything like that. So I'll be one of the first to know when the rest of the series comes out. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Anything to add? Uh, no, my math ain't going great. Okay, cool. All right. So <laughs> number, number three was, why is it not, oh God, now my OCD is really going to be playing up, is Four Chambers, Power of the Matchmaker by Julie. It's well, it's Four Chambers, but it's in the series called Power of the Matchmaker by Julie Wright. Um, it's a romance fiction ebook again. So well written, kind of emotional, kind of annoying in that you just want these two people to kind of get together already and it turns out like they're in their own lives, they can't really do that straight away and they both have separate things going on and so yeah, but it was really good, it only took me like an hour and a half to read but obviously that might skew things for other people but if it helps to know that it's, I think it was like 260 pages, don't quote me on it but I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was something like that so it was really short read but it was really worth it and the last one was I Am Delilah by Josie S. Kilpack. If anyone has seen um, Win a Date with Tad Hamilton, this is kind of like that, but it doesn't have the same ending. Well, actually, yeah, it doesn't really have the same ending. But um, it was really good. It's just like girl next door meets superficial guy and she turns him around, blah, blah, blah. And he wants a relationship with her, but she doesn't want a relationship with him because she's with someone else. 
But yeah, so it's just that I don't want to spoil it, but I'm just going to say go get it. The link will be in the description. Again, it's only like 202 pages. Really short read. I just sort of, you know, I read things late at night when instead of having, you know, my phone out or playing, you know, annoying Candy Crush games, I get an e-book and I read it. Yeah. <laughs> what? what are you laughing at me for? Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about, it's one of my miscellaneous, is the Goodreads app. I've had a Goodreads profile, obviously, online when it first came out. Well, maybe not when it first came out, but I first found out about, like, in 2010, 2011, I think. And um, I thought, I'm just going to download the app and have it on my phone for um, so I could catalogue. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I, I had I had so that way I could download it and I could use it for recommendations and I could plug in what I read and review things and then it would tell me what other books I could get to read. So um yeah, I would recommend it and it's just really nice to track what you've read and how many things you've read and how long it took you to read certain things and blah blah blah. So I suppose something that's your favourite this month. Sandwich maker. It's not a sandwich maker. It's a family. It's a wire stripper. Yes. Because some genius two months ago decided, hey, you know what would be really fun? If I put the wire of the sandwich press in the sandwich press and turned it on. We need googly eyes, googly eyes. They look like eyebrows. It's really cool. <laughs> See I happy wire strippers. You okay oh. here? No. Sandwich. So yeah. And we didn't die, we fixed it this afternoon. The house hasn't, you know, caught on fire. True. The bent, the kitchen didn't melt. But we did discover that the house is on separate points because when that fried, the TV was on. But everything else was Yeah, and I said to you, the circuit in the kitchen has tripped. Go switch it on. And you're like, nah, the TV's on, she'll be right. The lights are on, she'll be right. Yeah. So it got to like 6 o'clock on a Saturday night and I'm like, I need to make myself dinner. And the fridge wasn't working, and the whole hat, like the kitchen had been off for like four hours. And then I called you to say, Look, if I die, this is where my stuff has to go. This is what I need to be done, right? And he didn't answer his phone. No. Like, you answer the phone with everyone else, but not for me. So. And then so I was like, I know how to switch. Like, obviously, it's a whole the house, so I didn't necessarily know. But other circuit breakers that I've switched, I've lived in the house for 20 something years, so I knew how to deal with that. But here I didn't know because it's completely... I don't understand 1980s electricians, okay? Neither 1990s I'm really good with because that's what my family house was. But, like, I don't know 1980s stuff, 1960s, whatever year this house was built in. Basically hammer and a roller duct tape. So basically something said it's off and I was like, well, that's the only thing that's off. I might as well switch it on. And then I should probably switch everything on and off with the main switch. And yes. Then, and then I went into the fridge and the fridge worked. No one died. I didn't explode, so everything's fine. So that is it. That is my monthly favourites. I'm sorry it's so brambly. I'm out of practice. It's been a month since I filmed a sit-down chit-chat. But um, thank you very much. Thank no. you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want more of, I don't know what we're going to call this wire stripper, but I'm sure Michael will come up with something. Do you I... want to say goodbye off screen? Goodbye for sandwiches. You know if that falls and breaks on my computer, you're going to have to buy me a new one, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and bye bye Also, too quickly, if you want one of these, you can get them from Jayco. <laughs> They're like, what, 40 bucks maybe? Uh, next time, if this, if this thing... We call it Willis. Willis we the White. Willis. Willis. Yes, if Willis returns, he will probably have googly eyes. Maybe. Or maybe several. Oh, so you're not going to harass me this whole filming night? Uh, maybe. Okay, fantastic. Maybe. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm pressing pause now.